The Plishtim gathered all their army together at Ephech, while Israel's army pitched camp by the spring in Israel. The leaders of the Plishtim were passing by with their hundreds and thousands. David and his men were bringing up the rear with Achish. The chiefs of the Plishtim asked, What are these Hebrews doing here? Achish answered the chiefs of the Plishtim, This is David, who was a servant of Shaul, the king of Israel. He's been with me now for well over a year. I haven't found anything wrong with him between the time he deserted to me and now. But the chief of the Plishtim became angry and said to him, Have the man return and go back to the place you set aside for him. Don't let him go into battle with us, because on the battlefield he might become our enemy. What better way could there be for him to get reconciled with his Lord than by cutting off the heads of our men? This is David. They are used to dance and sing about him. Shaul has killed his thousands, but David, his ten thousands? So Achish summoned David and said to him, As Ed and I lives, you have been upright, and I myself would have been more pleased to have you go on campaign with me because I haven't found anything wrong with you between the day you arrived and now. However, the chiefs don't trust you. Therefore, now go back and go in peace so as not to do what happens bad to the chiefs of the Plishtim. David said to Akish, But what have I done? What have you found in your servant during the time I have been with you that disqualifies me from going and fighting against the enemies of the Lord my king? Kish answered David, I know that you are as I know that you are as good from my point of view as an angel of God. Nevertheless, the chiefs of the Plishtim has said he is not to go with us to the battlefield. So get up early in the morning with the servants of your Lord who came with you, and as soon as you are up and it gets light, leave. David got up early in the morning, he and his men to leave and go back into the land of the Plishtim, where the Plishtim continued up to Israel. Three days later, when David and his men arrived in Ziklag, they found that the Amaleki had raided the Negev and Ziklag. They had sacked Ziklag and burned it down, and they have taken captive the women and everyone there, small and great. They hadn't killed anyone, but had carried them away off as they went on their way. So when David and his men arrived at the city, there it was burned, burned down, with their wives, sons, and daughters taken captive. Then David and his people with them cried aloud until they had no more power to cry. David's two wives had been taken captive, Kinoam from Israel and Abigail, the, the widow of Neville from Carmel. David was in serious trouble. The people were taken were talking about stoning him to death because all the people were in such deep grief, each man over his sons and daughters. But David strengthened himself in Adonai his God. David said to Abithyar the Kohen, the sons of the Meliak, please bring the ritual vest here to me. Abithyar brought the vest to David, then David consulted Adonai. He asked, should I go in pursuit of these raiders? Will I catch up with them? And Adonai answered him, Go in pursuit, because you will overtake them and recover everyone and everything. So David went, he and six hundred men with him. They came to Vadi Besor, where those who were to stay behind waited. Then David continued in pursuit with four hundred men, while two hundred, too exhausted across the Vadi Besor, stayed behind. They found an Egyptian in the countryside and brought him to David. They gave him some bread to eat and water to drink. They also gave him a lump of dried figs and two branches of raisins. After eating, he revived, because he hadn't eaten or drunk any water for three days and nights. David asked him, To whom do you belong? Where are you from? He answered, I am an Egyptian boy, the slave of an Amaleki. My master abandoned me three days ago because I got sick. We raided the Negev and the Kriti, and Negev and Yehuda, and the Negev and Caleb, and we burned down Ziklag. 
David asked him, Will you lead me down to the raiding party? He said, If you will swear by God to me that you won't kill me or hand me back to my master, I will lead you down to the raiders. He led them down, and there they were, spread out over the ground, eating and drinking and celebrating how much spoil they had taken from the territory of the Plishtim and the territory of Yehuda. David attacked them from dawn until the evening. The next day, no one escaped, except the 400 young men who jumped on camels and got away. David recovered all that Amaleki had taken. He also rescued his two wives. They found nothing missing big or little, not sons, not daughters, not plundered goods, or anything else they had taken. David brought it all back. David took the flocks, herds, and drove them ahead of their own livestock, announcing, This is David's spoil. David came to where the 200 men who had been too exhausted to follow him, whom they had to stay at Vadi Basor, they came out to meet David and the people with him. When David approached them, he greeted them. But some of the men who had gone with David were evil men, scoundrels. And they said, They didn't go with us? So we're not giving them any of the property we've recovered. Each man can take his wife and children and leave. And David said, no, my brothers, don't do this with the goods of Adonai has given us. He protected us, and he handed the raiding party over to us. Anyhow, no one agrees with you about this. No, the share of someone who stays with the equipment will be the same as the share of someone who goes out and fights. They will share equally. It, will, it has been that way from that day on. He established it as a ruling for Israel to this day. When David came to Ziklag, he sent some of the spoil to the leaders of Yehuda, who were his friends, with a note. Here is a present from you, the spoils of the enemies of Adonai. He sent such gifts to those in Bethel, to those in Ramah, to those in Yitar, to those in Aroror, to those in Shifmot, to those in Eshtemoa, to those in Rachal, to those in Yerachemeli, to those in the cities of the Kini, to those in Homora, to those in Kor Ashan, to those in Atach, to those in Hebron, and to all the places where David and his men had frequently visited. Now the Plishtim pressed their attack against on Israel. The men of Israel fled before the Plishtim, leaving their dead on Mount Gilboa. The Plishtim pursued and overtook Saul and his sons, and the Plishtim killed Yonatan, Avendav, and Milkeshua, and the sons of Shual. The fighting went hard against Shual, then the archers overtook and wounded him, so that he was in agony. Shual said to his armor bearer, Draw your sword and run it through me with me. Otherwise, these uncircumcised men will come, run me through, and make sport of me. But his armor bear refused. He was too frightened. So Shaul took his own sword and fell on it. When his armor bearer saw that Shaul was dead, he too, on his own sword, died with him. Thus Shaul, his three sons, his armor bearer, and all his men died that same day together. And the men of Israel who were on the side, on the other side of the valley, and those who were on the far side of the yard, and saw that the men of Israel had fled, and that Shaul and his sons were dead, they abandoned the cities and fled. Then the Plishtim came and lived in them. The following day, when the Plishtim came to strip the dead, they found Shaul and his three sons lying dead on Mount Gilboa. They cut off his head, stripped off his armor, and sent them all and sent these all over the territory of the Plishtim to carry the news to the temples of their idols and to the people. Then they put his armor in the temple for the Ashtarot and, and fastened his body to the wall of Beat Sha'an. When the people living in Yevish Gidad Gildad heard that the Plishtim had done to Shaul, all the warriors set out traveling all night took the body of Shaul and the bodies of his sons off the wall of Beit Sha'an and returned to Yavish and burned them there. Then they took their bones, buried them under the tamarisk tree in Yavish, and fasted seven days. 